Welcome to another back of the net recording. This is to help with proportionality and the type of proportionality I would like to find on a higher tier paper. Um, first of all, I just want to do a little recap on what proportionality might mean. It's not something I often do. I normally go straight into just um, showing how to do the questions. But if we consider this rectangle here, it's 6 by 2. We could say that the width is proportional, and that means that sign there, to the length. The width is proportional, that sign there means proportional to the length. We don't actually know what the relationship is yet, we haven't defined it. But what I do know is, if I was to enlarge that rectangle, which I've done here, so if I went from it being 2 and 6, if I change that to be 4, and it was a genuine enlargement, I've doubled the width, so I'd need to double the height. So it would be 4 to 12, because I've enlarged them proportionally. That's the idea of proportion. I could go bigger, I could have said it was 40 and 120. As long as whatever I do to the width, I do to the length, I would have enlarged it, or increased its size proportionally. Now I can go a bit farther than this, L is proportional to W, or W is proportional to L, and say that actually means that W is equal to some number k times l. I could have said it the other way and said that l equals k times w. Now if I've got one example, which I have here, of, of the rectangle, I can actually work out what that k would be. Because I know that when w is 2, l is 6. So 6 equals k times 2. What must the k be? Well, I can do 6 divided by 2, because we 3, or I can just see that 3 2 is a 6. So I know that k, the constant, is 3. So I've now got a formula that says L here, L equals k times w, L equals 3 times w, or 3w. Now I've done this correctly, that formula will also work in this enlarged version of this one. So, the W, the width here, was 40, and the length would be 3 times 40, 120. Yes, it's true. And that's a really common setup to these questions. They will tell you that something is proportional to something else, so you can write that statement down. I rearranged it here to write it the other way. I said here that L was proportional to W. I did that just to make the numbers a little bit easy for you, so we're dealing with uh, a 3 there and not a third. When you've got that, you will have some information given to you that will allow you to link the two together. And here we link the two with the 6, which means I can find what the relationship is between the two variables, between the W and the L. When I did that, I worked out it was 3, so I've now got a formula that connects them. So whatever length, sorry, whatever width rectangle I'm given, if it's an enlargement of my original one, I'd better work out what the length is. Similarly, if the length was given to me, I'd know I had to divide it by 3 to give me W. OK, that's a very brief recap of the proportionality idea. In the higher paper, you may get four types of proportionality. Direct, squared, cubed, and inverse. And each time, we can write that down in a mathematical way. This is Y is proportional to X. That is called direct proportion. In terms of a formula, y will always be some number k times x. If we look at the squared proportion, y is proportional to x squared. That means y will always be some number times x squared. That would be the type of formula you get. For cubed, it will be y is proportional to x cubed. So y equals k times x cubed. And finally, inverse proportion, this often students find a little harder, is that y is proportional to 1 divided by x. Now this is unusual because as x gets bigger, y will get smaller. We write that as y equals k times 1 over x, or an easier way to calculate things with it is to write it as y equals k divided by x. So that's a type of proportionality. You need to associate the words direct proportion with that formula there. You need to know that squared proportion with that one there. You need to know that cube proportion 
will look like that one there. And finally, inverse proportion will look like this one here. Now, very occasionally they're nasty, and like I said, it um, varies pro inversely proportional to the cubed. So it would be k over x cubed, or maybe inversely squared. So it would be k over x squared. But that's just a variant of this inversely one. And if you can do these top three here, you'll better do that one, even if it is a squared one. OK, you need to remember this. I'm now going to go and show you how I use it for some questions. OK, let's take the blind off. Here we go. Y is directly proportional to X. So straight away, I should be knowing in my head that means that Y is proportional to X. So Y equals some number, K, we don't know what it is yet, times X. We could just use a different letter, we could use C, we could use A, we could use B, we could use Z. Um, we just tend to use K all the time, so it's good practice to use that. Whenever we do proportionality questions, the constant of proportionality, we use the letter K. Right. It says, when X equals 50, Y equals 10. Find a formula for Y in terms of X. So that means we've got to get a Y equals. Well, we know Y equals some number K times X. Can we find out what that number k is? Well, we've been given two bits of information, the 50 and the 10. So y is going to be equal to k x, but we know y equals 10 and x equals 50, sorry, 500. So I can put those numbers in. So 10 is going to be equal to k times by the 500. All right, now I want to know what k is. It's being times by 500, so to work out what it is, I would need to rearrange that. or just use the diagram and say that 10 divided by the 500 will be equal to k. I can do a little bit of simplifying there. I can cross that one off and that one off, divide both sides by 10. So k equals 1 50th. So my formula is going to be y equals k, which is 1 50th. There we go, k, x. That is my formula done. And that's a very common start to the question. It now says b, calculate the value of y when x equals 300. Well, all I have to do for that one is write down my new formula I've worked out. So y equals 1 50th x. And I put the information in. So y is going to be equal to a 50th of 350. Okay, that should be quite simple to do. You can either simplify it by uh, dividing the noughts or you can just do it by reasoning. I would do 35 divided by 5 is 7, so 350 divided by 50 is going to be 7 as well. So y is equal to 7. Okay, that's how you do those questions. Always remember, read it directly proportional means that, so that. There you go. Let's look at a different type of question. Similar, but slightly different. Right. Ah, P is inversely proportional to V. So when I read that, the first thing I'm going to do is write down that P is inversely proportional, so 1 over V. I can rewrite that as P equals K times 1 over V, or P equals K over V. And I prefer this one for, for my workings out, really. Right. Find a formula for P in terms of V. We already know that P equals K over V. We've been given two bits of information there and there put it into your equation. So P5 equals K divided by 8. Can I find out what K is? Well, you can do it by balancing. We could say that K divided by 8 gives me 5. So 5 times by 8 will give me K, which is 40. So K equals 40. Don't just stop there, because they want a formula. You've worked out what it is, you just haven't written it down yet. 
So P is now equal to 40 divided by V. Job done. Part B. Calculate the value of P when V equals 2. Okay, copy down your formula, or we'll quote your formula. V is equal to 2, so P is going to be equal to 40 divided by 2, which of course is 20. P equals 20. Okay, fairly straightforward. Let's try another one. Here we go. M is directly proportional to L cubed. M is proportional to L cubed. Stage 1, stage 2, M equals K times L cubed. Done. Find the value of M when L equals 3. Now, they haven't given you a stage version of this, but I would still urge you to use the formula method that we just did before. So, when L equals 2, M equals 160. I'm going to use that information. M equals K times L cubed. M, 160 equals K. What I'm trying to find out, L cubed. L is 2. 2 cubed. So, 160 equals K times 8. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 2 cubed is 8. Get k by itself, I need to divide by 8. 16 divided by 8 would be 2, so 160 divided by 8 is 20. So 20 is what k is. So k equals 20, so my formula now is that m equals 20 l cubed. Don't stop, because I'm answering the question. Find the value of m when l is 3. But there's my formula. L is 3, m equals 20 times by 3 cubed. 3 cubed is 27, so m equals 20 times 27. 2 times 27 would be 54, so 20 times 27 will be 540. m is equal to 540. There we go. There's no units in the question, so just 540. Let's do one more. I think I've got one more left for you. Left for you. Here we go. The mass m in kilograms of an iron sphere is proportional to the cube. Right, they haven't given you the like l cube thing this time, but it's just proportional to the cube of its radius r. So you know that m is that's the equals proportional. Sorry, m is proportional. That's that sign there the cube, so I've got a cube of its radius r, r cubed. m is proportional to r cubed, so m equals k times r cubed. Find a formula for m in terms of r. Right, we're back to the staged question. Right, m equals k times r cubed. So, 3750 equals k times 5 cubed. Well, 5 cubed is 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 is 125. So 3750 equals k times 125. To get k by itself, I need to divide by the 125 on this side, or well, both sides effectively, but we'd write it like that. Okay, and 3750 divided by 125 is 30. So K equals 30. Again, don't forget, they wanted a formula. We've just worked out what K is. So well, we need to quote and write down the formula. I'll just move that out of the way in a minute. So the actual formula is going to be M equals equals k, we've worked out k is 30, r cubed, r cubed, there we go. Okay, second bit, find the value of m. Ah, I missed it, it says there, r equals 6, now find the value of m. So quote our formula, m equals 30 r cubed, substitute in to our equation for the values we've got, we haven't got m 
equals 30 times 6 cubed. Let's put the time sign in there. Well, 6 cubed is 216. M equals 30 times 216. And that gives you an answer of M equals 6480. Now, mass in kilograms of an iron sphere, radius in centimetres, don't forget to put your units in. There we go. Mass in kilograms of an iron sphere is equal to cube of its radius r centimetres. That sounds incredibly heavy. But, 5 centimetres was 3750. Do you know what? I think it should have been in grams. I can't believe that a 5 centimetre sphere is really if iron is really gone away three tons they've got that question wrong that should be in grams i'm sure of it more likely a five centimeter sphere oh it's 10 centimeters across it's going to be three kilograms oh i don't know i'm not quite sure about that i'm not sure they thought carefully about their units there in terms of the realisticness of it anyway that's by the by they again they said it was in kilograms so we've got to give it in kilograms there it is Okay, hope that's been useful to you. Hope it's cleared up this idea of using, first of all, if I just go straight back to the original slide, you need to read in the question and recognize when you get the words, direct proportion, you go through that process to that formula, then substitute the two values you know to work out K. If it's a squared one, you go through that process, write down your formula, again, work out K when you get given the two values, and so on. Okay, good luck with that when you come to it in the exam. Go through it again, I'm sure it'll be absolutely fine.